Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. If you have seen my video about my comic collection, you're already familiar with this perspective here uh, and the other comics that are left and right and behind of me. But today I want to focus just on this tiny but pretty important part of my collection. Uh, these are my European science fiction comics. Here's my first shelf with European uh, sci-fi comics. Hi, by the way. Um, I like to put the older books above the more recent, more newer ones. Um, so uh, since I've encountered more adult-orientated comics, firstly with uh, ge the German version of Heavy Metal or Metal Hurlant, Schwermetall, so I put these above the rest. Not each and every book here in this top shelf is really old. Um, for an example, these are uh, more recent editions that I've bought uh, quite recently, but uh, they're classic comics nevertheless, so I put them above the rest. But let's start with one of my favorite comic creators ever, and this is Mr. Philippe Trouillet. I did several videos about his uh, fantastic comics. This is uh, published by Mel, and I think it's pretty rare in the meantime. And um, here we have some books from the Lone Sloan series. Um, as you can see, uh, these are the German versions, which are a bit bigger than the English ones from Titan. And as you know by my videos about these books, I, I find them very recommendable. I like... Um, Trouillet's art a lot, but I'm not always fine with the quality of the art production uh, in these Titan books here. So, and uh, so sometimes you're better off when you look online for um, the French originals or even Italian or Spanish versions. Um, they can be from the 70s or 80s, but the printing quality usually is even better than uh, or the newer ones. So, this is the new one from Titan Comics. Uh, the Iragiel and Earn the Mad book. Um, I have several of these IKEA boxes and I find them pretty practical, uh, especially when you put magazines or even comic books in them. Uh, it saves you the hassle with all the bagging and boarding, at least in my opinion. Uh, they don't bend anymore and you have them pretty good at your grasp. So, okay, let's look what's inside this box here. We have the German version of Die Nacht, La Nuit, and the French original. Than we. And a very old version of Lone Sloan Delirious. I think this is from yeah, Dragon's Dream. I have nothing but praises for this book, even though the cover here is a bit goofy. Here are Gale and Urn. Bizarre, a collection of black and white, uh, more cartoony stuff from Drie. Nosferatu, a vampire tale from Drie. And that's it. And right beside the wooden box here, we have the English version from Titan Comics, Titan Box. And next to it, we have Die Heere des Eroberers, some fantastic sort of brutish fairy tale about some conquistadors. Um, almost a fantasy tale, but not really lighthearted. Um, and right beside the aforementioned um, Schwermetall uh, collected editions. Uh, this collects heft um, magazine number one to four. And they are bind bound here in a pretty strange way. So they're uh, pretty loose in the meantime. I don't know if you can see it. Um, These bindings here are not made for eternity, even though 
the comics in it actually are, so this is a bit unfortunate. Um, yeah. And as you know, um, the series Schwermetall uh, was obviously not concluded with uh, magazine number 20, but at some point it all became, uh, <laughs> as I said, a TNA and uh, not so much more about good comics, but more about yeah, uh, titillating uh, the more younger audience to buy it uh, with all means and so I, uh, I'm pretty fine with having all the 21st uh, Schwermetall and magaz magazine and magazines in this fashion here. And here I have my issue 1 and 2 of uh, Schwermetall. Uh, they are not very valuable, not at all. You can still get them for 3, 4 or 5 euros on eBay. Very seldomly, uh, the money you have to pay for a comic is really significant uh, for the quality of the comic. Usually it's not. So, and uh, here I have uh, Epic Magazines, Comic Art für Erwachsene, which is a bit uh, later stuff, but in the heavy metal vein, a um, bit more sci-fi for everyone. I have some of these. And in terms of French magazines, uh, in a German translation, I have here Pilot. Uh, not to confuse by, even though uh, it clearly relates to the, the French Pilot, um, these were more for adults, uh, the German versions. They picked a series that were more controversial, more, um, yeah more interesting in general, I think, and in comparison to heavy metal or schwer metal, more funny um, and even more sexy, maybe sometimes. But yeah, so I really love these Gesamtausgaben or um, in French Integrals, um, these collected editions of several albums uh, in each uh, book. For instance, here we have Luc Orion, the European Flash Gordon, so to speak, even though you have to uh, keep in mind that um, Eddie Papa, who drew all these comics, was not Alec Raymond at all, so uh, they, not each and every story here has aged very well, but it, it has a lot of charm. I, I love these stories here a lot. Um, Speaking of having aged not too well, this is maybe one of the few comics by William Vance that I don't dig too much. Um, Sci-fi story. And this is actually not on the right shelf, but it's William Vance as well. Uh, several uh, rare illustrations by him. And here we have a series uh, of Yoko Tsuno. Uh, science, for the most part, a science fiction uh, comic. And I spoke about it in another video in which I said, oh, this is aimed at kids, it's not for me, so I won't buy these books here. And as you can see, I clearly haven't bought these. But what uh, really convinced me that I have to have these uh, Yokozuna books, it's a um, Japanese, a uh, young Japanese woman, uh, experiencing uh, strange adventures in Europe and outer space. And what I really loved was... Oh. Yeah, here. The German adventures. And uh, these stories play in some parts of Germany uh, where we lived before. We moved here. And I recognized all the these parts here and uh, they are up to the tiniest detail, very original and very true. Um, so I just ha have to have uh, these books here and uh, this book in, in particular and I really liked the story and the art and so since um, my MO is usually getting all in I had to 
by the rest of them and they are as far as I've read them up to here I, I think uh, they are pretty fantastic. More aimed at arts is uh, Zetari, uh, written by Martin Lodewijk, who uh, wrote Storm and other uh, comics. Um, this is just a side project of him and one John M. Burns, who drew in a pretty realistic fashion this sci-fi story, one-off story with a pretty high cheesecake factor and well, this kind is your kind of thing I highly can recommend uh, checking out Zetari. One shelf below we have Möbius, we have uh, Jodorowsky, we have uh, the Meta Barons and Juan Jimenez who was uh, the artist behind most of the Meta Barons uh, comics. He wrote uh, some comics um, as well. He's not the best writer. He's a fantastic artist and Maybe uh, in terms of his self-written comics, this is the best one, Leo Roa, uh, two album series about some journalist, detective uh, kind of guy. Um, but uh, Your Last Live has really not aged that well and it's not even uh, that old of a comic. Um, and Segments is, has really great art and a great premise, but ended pretty abruptly, as I remember it. And then we have Le Quatrième Pouvoir, um, the fourth force, die vierte Macht, about Earth uh, being in war um, and some scientific experiments. A brutal comic, like some of these Jimenez drawn comics. They are not really light-hearted, and uh, he has, um, it was um, planned out, mapped out as a trilogy, but he continued uh, in volume 4 with Gal. I don't know if he uh, completed the series here, because he is not, no longer with us, um, unfortunately. So, here we start with Jodorowsky craziness, uh, the White Lama, and a huge, beautiful collected edition. Moonface, which is um, available in the meantime in English as well, I guess as a one part collected editions, edition. Highly recommended even though you have to uh, know what you're in for, it's uh, really crazy. Jodorowsky at his craziest, maybe. Um, strange uh, Western Yodo style, Juan Soto, one and two, the sons of El Topo. A smaller collected edition of um, Short stories written by Alexander Jodorowsky, Screaming Planet, published by um, Humanoids. So here's a Bramble, also a Humanoids book. So here we start the Möbius section of the collection and with an old art book, a book that is no sci-fi at all, um, but good satire about religion and in particular about a priest being seduced by the pleasures of the flesh. Um, I think it's really maybe Möbius' uh, most consistent story ever in a, in a way, uh, aside of Blueberry, of, of course, but that was... Um, yeah, okay, this is written by Jodorowsky. Anyhow, uh, a big Hatzak edition. Die Sternenwanderer. Uh, this is the first part of Edina in German. Another Hatzak edition, or a smaller one, soft cover. And then we have the Dark Horse collected editions of the so called Möbius Library. Uh, the Art of Edina, Inside Möbius, uh, part one, two, three. 
There are, of course, a more autobiographical stuff and just in part some uh, sci-fi uh, shards uh, here and there. And here we have the exhibition catalog of Möbius that I've shown recently in a video. And then we come to the Inkal. And there's the Inkal proper, written by Jodorowsky, drawn by Möbius, uh, which I have here in this slipcase, in this beautiful slipcase. And uh, these are all hardcovers inside, as you can see. Um, and there was the series that was obviously written later on, but plays uh, before the Inca proper and was uh, therefore called Before the Inca, drawn by Jan Jetov. And this uh, huge, beautiful collected edition um, contains all these stories here. And um, after the Inca or the last Inca, uh, drawn by one Ladrön and in a pretty distinct style here, uh, collected in slim hardcovers as well. So, since one of the characters in the Inkal is the Meta Baron, uh, he is uh, the key character in, in this, this series, uh, the Meta Barons, which explores his. Um, ancestors, his family, so to speak, uh, in these beautiful books, uh, done with everything uh, that makes a book shine and shimmery, maybe even a bit too much, but uh, given them that these books are pretty opulent in the art here, is highly detailed and colorful and, and um, quite baroque, in, in, if this is the right word for a sci-fi comic, uh, I find uh, the build and the, how these books are made is pretty fitting. Some of the most beautiful books here in my collection. The Techno Fathers or the Techno Priest um, is, uh, in, in German, Die Techno Väter, is another series that plays in this Metabaron universe and is highly uh, recommended as well drawn by Zohan Janjetov. I mean, you have to dig these art, this art here, but who won't? And if my memory serves correctly, I've done a video about this book here as well. There's a more recent series called the Meta Baron Singular. Um, that I put in this IKEA box here, which is not as great as the Metaborns plural, but still a pretty good comic. Um, and continues to explore this harsh and brutish world of the Metaborns. Maybe sometimes a bit too grim, even for my taste. And um, this here, Kastaka, is a distinct comic about, yeah, really the ancestors of the Metaboran. One shelf below, we have a lot of comics drawn by Francois Coyton, Valerian and Veronique, Barbarella, Druna, Hombre, and some comics drawn by Paul Gillon. Starting with the comics by Francois Coyton, I've did a long series of videos about his comics. I... Uh, haven't done it for a while, I apologize, but I will continue, um, promised. So, uh, here we have uh, some art book, almost newspaper size, which I've show, uh, showed off in one of these videos. Um, fantastic illustrations that really use the format here and show right there what a fantastic artist uh, Francois Coyton is. Uh, same with this older hardcover here, the Archivar, published by the older, now defunct um, German comic publisher Feast Comics. And now we go to the right, uh, the real comics here, Zara, 
these are really old stuff from him. I think he did some of these comics way back then when he was still a pupil in the academy. And here we have a plagiat, which is drawn in more in a Lindy Claire Wayne, and this is a cooperation with Benoit Peters and Francois Coyton with one Ellen Goffer. And oh, this is not Francois Coyton at all, but comics published by the same publisher way back then of Francois Coyton. So I put so I put them here. They're not even proper sci-fi. This is the other world. Um, Imagine a world in which all these fairy tale tropes are true, and you have this story here. As I said, it's not by Francois Gordon at all. Some adventure comic. Here's uh, the next part of the other world. But now back to comics uh, drawn by Francois Gordon. Um, Mary, uh, the English title is The Leaning Girl. Um, Der Schattenmann. The sh Man in the Shadow, or The Shadow Man. And a book not drawn um, by him, but one under Balthus, written uh, by Scotton and Peters. A classic of the obscure cities, uh, The Tower, La Tour, uh, drawn by Scotton, written by Benoit Peters. More stuff from this universe here. More uh, a book about with a theoretical view on the uh, the books here. Uh, articles, essays, and stuff like that. Oh, where was I? Les Murelles de Samarie, the French version of the. The Walls of Samaris, The Labyrinth of Samaris, um, The Theory of the Grain of Sand, or somehow like that, the, the Sandkorn Theory, The Feather of the Architect, Brussels, Bruxelles. Beyond the Border, I'm pretty sure that's not the real English title here. Atlantic 12, about this train, this team train. And Au revoir Paris. I think the English title is After Paris, but I'm not sure. Can't remember everything. And one and two, and some uh, land landscape formatted art book, memories uh, of these obscure city stuff, which relates um, in particular to a movie they made. And yeah, this book here was a bit of a, dis a disappointment, The Last Pharaoh, um, Francois Coyton take on uh, the weird world of Blake and Mortimer, this uh, European classic by Edgar P. Jacobs. Now to my Valerian and Veronique books. In the rest of the world, uh, they are known as Valerian and Loreline. Uh, so they changed, uh, for whatever reason, uh, her name in the German books. Maybe they found it cooler to have this alliteration going on here. Um, Art-wise, very cartoony, very efficient. Um, in the beginning, a bit maybe too cartoony for some of you and uh, me as well, I have to admit. Uh, but the art uh, improves and the story writing is top notch. Uh, maybe the best written uh, sci fi comics ever. Um, Pierre Christine is just a, a fantastic writer. And as you can see here, the art. Still cartoony, but has improved over the run of the, the series. So, um, 
another favorite of mine for a different reason. I found uh, Barbarella, uh, written and drawn by Jean-Claude Forrest. Really charming, especially in the, these uh, colored versions here. Um, just such a treat. I, I really love it immensely. Most of you maybe know uh, these Barbarella comics in one of these two-tone versions here that I really don't like as much, but I keep this book here just uh, for comparison purposes. Next up we have stories uh, that play in the very special dystopian future of Paolo Elotieri Serpieri and his well-shaped um, main protagonist, the lady called Druna here. So we have a lot of eroticism in it, but um, in a very harsh world in which you just can't survive when you uh, prostitute yourself and a lot of the characters are disfigured or dismembered and yeah uh, very interesting very harsh um, sometimes a bit wordy so you have to skip the, the writing at, at places he's not the best writer in the world but a fantastic artist so no harm done when you can get these art books, which are a bit uh, even more erotic than uh, his comics. Somehow in the same way, and if not very similar, is Hombre, drawn by José Ortiz and written by Antonio Segura. Again, a post-apocalyptic uh, setting and a harsh story with uh, some scantily clothed women in it. Um, yeah, already a European classic, if you ask me. Fantastic uh, comics that have to be penalized soon. Um, here we have Paul, uh, comics from Paul Gillon, The Surviving Lady or something like this, um, would be a proper translation. He is very wordy as a writer and you have to get used to his style of writing but the science fiction worlds he shows us uh, with all these goofy characters are really one of a kind and I really uh, like these comics from Paul Gillon. And stuffed here right at the end of the shelf are some uh, comics from Jordi Bernet that I have bought recently, which are, uh, to be honest, more fantasy uh, uh, series. And I've um, bought, after doing my video, this book here arrived in the mail. Uh, it's the French version of Kraken. I just had to have this one here. Now to my penultimate shelf with European sci-fi comics, which I refer to as my Don Lawrence shelf. Even though not every book in it is by Don Lawrence, um, these here are from different creators. Um, like Siberia 56, about a frozen world out there somewhere in the universe. An okay story with excellent uh, cover uh, pictures, I have to admit. The same is true for Prophet here, uh, drawn uh, by Mathieu Louvre, and the last volumes are uh, uh, written by him as well. Fantastic covers. The English title is totally different, it's not Prophet, but I think you will recognize uh, the cover images here. Uh, the story within is okay, uh, but can't hold up to the expectations that the uh, covers um, stir up in you, maybe. Now to Don Lawrence. Here we have two hardcovers called The Collection. Uh, it's volume one and two. Uh, even though they're called The Collection, they're in, written in Dutch, which I can't read. But since I'm a big fan of Don Lawrence, I couldn't pass these books here. Um, and some fanzines called Pandave, named after the universe, the Pandave universe of uh, Don Lawrence and here another Don Lawrence fanzine. Next up we have Trigan, uh, the more or less complete collection of Don Lawrence fantastic sci-fi comics. I did a 
separate video about it. Fantastic stuff. Um, you have to get used to this world, uh, I think. Uh, it's ancient Rome in the future, so... Yeah... Uh, very old-fashioned uh, stuff in, in terms of the morale be behind these stories, but it looks so damn beautiful. Um, and has crazy robots and uh, funny tech and uh, weird creatures and all that pulp um, stuff that makes these comics really enjoyable. But in terms of sci-fi, the far more interesting title is his later series Storm that Don Lawrence drew up to volume 22 and afterwards uh, different artists and writers took over. Um, it's just fantastic escapist materi uh, material that will transport you into the world of Pandavi um, and you can experience uh, strange funny adventures with him and his friend girlfriend Red Hair um, and I bought this nice slipcase here. And when you look at these fantastic cover images, uh, you will get a good feeling for uh, what ins what's inside of these books. And what's really special, he has the same style within uh, these books. And with many of these comics, you have the pulpy style, the more realistic, detailed style on the cover. But with Don Lawrence comics, it's all over. In each and every panel is just a piece of art. Uh, just fantastic to look at and uh, great fun all over. So, and later on, other artists took over, uh, especially one Roman Molina. Um, I do like these comics, but they can't hold up a candle to uh, The Real Storm by Don Lawrence. Recently, um, there, this book here was published, uh, The Victim of Navatica. Um, I enjoyed uh, this comic and I will continue to get them. I'm not so sure if I will continue with the spin-offs around his girlfriend Red Hair, which are drawn in a more, less, much more less detailed style and are really just the side project of Romano Molina and his uh, co-author uh, Rob van Babel. Um, yeah, they're really an acquired taste and you have to be a hardcore Storm fan to enjoy this. You don't have to be a hardcore Storm fan to enjoy this book here. Uh, an art book with Don Lawrence art. It's yeah, more or less very much about the ladies and especially red hair and other fantasy sci-fi queens and other stuff. So, believe it or not, we made it to the bottom shelf here, and uh, these are some graphic novels and illustrated classic comics and stuff like that that I have to put eventually somewhere else in my collection, but these here are um, mixed up uh, sci-fi comics like Ogregord, Og written by Jodorowsky and uh, drawn by Jan Yetov, just uh, issue one. Uh, the Expelled from Orion, a two-part series that I found a bit lacking in complexity. Two volumes is sometimes not enough to really create a um, satisfying uh, science fiction world. Uh, Moria here was a very interesting uh, sci-fi take, a bit with some cheesecake, as you can see. Um, bit some kind of investigation about and about economics in the future uh, yeah I really can recommend it um, after uh, the fifth album the artist changed and not for the good I have to say I checked it out and didn't like it so I was satisfied with these five albums here 
Carthago about um, creatures, huge creatures, huge sharks and uh, dinosaurs uh, that allegedly have survived somewhere below the ocean and or below the ice in Antarctica and such. And this is a kind of a uh, comic combined Jules Verne in, in modern times, if you will. Um, very functional, okay art and interesting stories. Um, not my favorite series of all time, but enough to, to uh, enjoy it and to buy uh, a new book of the series when it comes out. There are a lot of spin-offs uh, to the series and I haven't uh, went that far to get them as well. So here are some random art books by Boris Vallejo and uh, just an anthology with different artists and with art from Peter Jones. I got them in a bundle from eBay for a few bucks so why not? Uh, these uh, magazines I bought when I was uh, 12, 13 or 14 years old. I can't remember. But I remember um, that I couldn't, could not wait until the next issue came out. These are just uh, depictions of spaceships and such where, from different artists who do this kind of art. No comics at all. In this wooden box here we have more Jodorowsky and more Pierre Christine and Enkil Bilal. Uh, he is interesting. Uh, these polit comics of him uh, playing in a not so far future and sometimes uh, un eerie realistic and sometimes just far out. I did a video about uh, Enki Bilal's um, bullet comics. And here's um, Aleph Tau by uh, Jodorowsky and Arno, drawn by Arno. A fun fantasy series, even though by far not my favorite of uh, Jodorowsky. Then I have a bunch of uh, soft covers here. Let's go through them real quick. A collection of comics from uh, Fernando Fernandez, who uh, was published in uh, Heavy Metal, I guess, as well. An old soft cover with Luc Orion. <laughs> yeah, some not so great comic. It, this holds a bit of an interest, as far as I can tell. This was drawn by the um, the owner of the German. Splitter Verlag, who is a real great publisher. Um, his comics are okay. Um, Danny Futuro, Danny Futuro, uh, with Tintin in space, if you will. Here, yeah, an old Yoko Tsuno comic that I own from childhood days, I guess. And then we have Casa, who was published in Metal Hurlant and Pilot. As you can see here, this is. Um, the cover image one of um, Schwermetall 2. And here we have two comics that were in the cheap comics bin, Mark Deville, Agent der Sterne. To be honest, I can't tell you too much about these. And here's a bunch of uh, Slim Heart covers, uh, each one containing one European album. Um, Vlad, created by Swarves and Griffo, which I know from other um, comics, so I was intrigued about this uh, series, especially uh, since I could get it on eBay for pretty cheap. Um, it's sort of the European Punisher, if you will. Um, mixed um, character be somewhere between a hitman and a detective operating in the wastelands of East Europe. A uh, real gripping, fantastic series. Um, very thoroughly uh, thought out world. Um, highly recommend it if you can grab them. Uh, I think they are still up for pretty cheap uh, over here at least. And one of the instances of uh, German comic creators making real good stuff. Gang Ho, 
Gumho as a series that is created obviously within the computer or with uh, the help of the computer which I'm usually not so keen on but this is so highly detailed that it's just great um, and about these kids in a dystopian future having survive, uh, having to survive in some kind of fall and um, yeah it's it's really fantastic. Unfortunately, I saw the English uh, version there, published in English uh, from some publisher, but in uh, American comic book size. And this is unbelievable. It's, it's really a crime. I mean, these books are European album sized, and um, even there you can't get all the details of the art uh, sometimes. And uh, to think of these pictures shrunken down to uh, comic book size, uh, American comic book size, makes me cringe somehow. So the last book for today is Negaljord, written and drawn by Vincent Perriot. A nice hardcover. Um, the story and especially the art will give you a lot of Möbius vibes. Uh, fantastic coloring, uh, excellent storytelling. Um, beautiful to look at and wonderful escapist stuff to read as I hope there was a lot of uh, wonderful escapist sci-fi stuff uh, for you to read today thanks for listening and watching goodbye